<laughs> we want thongs. Thank you, Becky. We want. Oh. Oops. Hi, folks. Welcome again to the Hobo and something YouTube channel. For I am the one and only Hobo Tom. And I just watched probably the best, worst Raw After Mania ever. And I will get into that in a little bit. There's some stuff to take care of. Again, I'd like to thank all those that have watched my previous videos. This is finally the ending of WrestleMania weekend. It's three days, four days, nothing but wrestling. You and I get a little wrestled out every so often. Wrestle, wrestle. But, um,. First of all, I like to thank, um, because little Fettuccine, let's see here, how many does he deserve? Oh, he has two of them. That's right. Yep, because again, if if you're on, my, if you watch YouTube, if you watch this guy's live stream, and leave a comment or subscribe and subscribe to the point where I can see you, you get a special little video or gift dedicated to you. So right now. Full of fetish, you sixty-nine. Thank you very much. This dirty pin goes out to you. So this was. Uh, let's talk about Raw a little bit, um, then I'll get into this, my schedule a little bit-ish. I think there's still more wrestling to be had. April's just like Wrestle Month. Like, it shouldn't be WrestleMania, it just should be a Wrestle Month. So, with <laughs> Raw, and I have to temper myself because there are some bad moments. There are some... Good moments. There are some ugly moments. And ugly you can interpret whichever way you choose to. We'll get into that, though. Uh, first thing I'd like to say, um, or actually, with all that again, th thank everyone for watching. Again, I'm kind of running low on Russell Energy. I have to get to sleep soon. That would be good. And I think I've made Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Wow, I've made five videos in literally five days. So in ten days, three. In ten days, I've actually made, wow, eight videos. Pretty impressive. And two, so again, very typically as my schedule, uh, tomorrow, Tuesday, tomorrow, I'll be giving you a little SmackDown review. Hopefully it's just as revealing. <laughs> You'll know why I chose that word very carefully. And then Saturday, I think if everything goes according to plan, and I'll know more for sure on Unfortunately, Thursday, it's going to be another NXT show. This will be the NXT After Mania when they do the Florida host show circuit. So we'll see if there's any new faces. I know um, as a spoiler, you don't want to know spoilers. Just mute. But the two big spoilers are, um, oh, I forgot his name now. I can't remember the name for the life of me. It's not for the Abushi. It's something, though. I'll think of it somewhere. But we're having one New Japan star come over to NXT. And I know DJ Z from Impact. Also signed 
fairly recently. Um, Matt Trevor just signed. I think that's his name. Also from. I still can't remember his freaking name. What the heck's wrong with me? I know he mentioned it too. Let's see here. Where's my notes at? Notes are awful. Oh, also. I have to give myself some credit here, folks. Very quickly. Do not have a picture of Dr. Tom. But I beat Dr. Tom in in a challenge. Because as far as NXT TakeOver goes, I actually picked four out of the five matches correct. Which means I am definitely in the head of one... Paul Levesque. And actually, so did Dr. Tom. So that, so that Paul Levesque head goes up for both of us. However, when it came to WrestleMania, we got six out of 13 right, and they kind of sidewinded us on one of them. So for that, because I'll give me just an extra tick. I'll say for WrestleMania, actually, Dr. Tom and I were both 50 50 bookers. Those are our predictions. I think the tiebreaker came down to the Supercard of Honor, but that's near the turn over there. I already talked about that. So, but now here. Kushida. That's who it is. Kushida's coming to NXT from New Japan. I knew it, start, I knew it started with a K. I just... It's, it's like, which... Oh, there's like three Takahashis in New Japan. And you say Takahashi, and I'm like... Which one? There's three of them. Ticking Time Bomb Takahashi. Tokyo Pimp Takahashi and good old plain regular Takahashi. So it's always confusing to go to. But uh, enough about all, 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 the, all the nonsense stuff. Let's talk about some Monday Night Raw. Again, this was an interesting show. It had the three aspects. It had the good, the bad, the ugly, and with the ugly <laughs> it, it almost showed the ugly. <laughs> and the crowd almost got ugly. So so let's talk about Monday Night Raw. It was a pretty interesting show. It starts out with a Seth Perlman recap about how he defeated Brock Lesnar. And I didn't see that match because I was at work, and I didn't realize he won due to a low blow. But I wonder if Seth's back to his <laughs> bastardly way. You have no idea. I have no idea. Um, New Day came out. They look like walking titles. Dare I say, Okada esque. Because they came out literally like all gold. Or an all gold, all shades of gold. Sparkly gold, black gold, rose gold, black gold. Every kind of gold you can imagine they were wearing. And deservingly so, because Kofi Kingston is, of course, the WWE champion. Um, in the middle of the celebration, Biggie did a split. That was amazing. And again, the whole crowd, well, the crowd, of course, um, for Seth started to chant, Boom, I A. Seth Rollins, Boom, I A. Seth Rollins, Boom, I A. Um, of course, New Day comes out. New Day rocks. New Day rocks. I think that's what it Kofi, Boom, I A. Kofi, Boom, I A. It was a pretty live crowd. Almost an ugly crowd, though. Of course, when did, did he make a split? Everyone, Seth just said, he did a freaking split! And everyone started chanting, Big E, Big E. Splits are hard to do. I'm a little bit older, and my groin kind of tightened up. 
back in the day, in my college days, when I was when I would play street hockey, and even before that, when I was the goalie, I could do splits. And then I took like a year off, get that one year older without being limber. I can still do some pretty cool stuff for being a big guy, but splits not anymore. Again, time and tide wait for no one. Eventually, everyone gets old. The two und- the two undefeated, father time, mother nature, never gonna beat them. Let me center myself. Better. There we go. There we go. So with that, um, we have our first match: Zack Ryder and Kurt Hawkins, who won the belts. I guess they wanted to stop Kurt Hawkins' losing streak. Let's take on the revival. And I was a little worried that they were going to give him the Zack Ryder treatment. Where I think for the one WrestleMania, was it SummerSlam? Whatever it was, he won the ladder match. And Larry, the next night, dropped the belt to The Miz when he was Intercontinental Champion. I actually think that was SummerSlam. Now now that I'm trying to, to access my memory banks. And as you can see, the question marks coming out of my head. But for the most part, it was, it was a pretty classic wrestling match. Um, the revival's so good. They pulled off, and I thought they were going to give the revival the win as a reward for the fact that Scott Dawson decked the guy, decked that stupid loser who attacked Bret Hart. Some fan jumped in the ring at the Hall of Fame ceremony in the ring, attacked Bret Hart. Scott Dawson. Woo! I had, I had mustard on it. And ketchup and relish. So I had a feeling they were going to reward Revival saying, Scott Dawson, you did us a solid. I'll take care of who knows? They, they might get the belt back. Maybe next pay per view, you're like, you know what? I can't forget. So, again, it was pretty cool. Again, the, the revival is so good at double teams. They hit the heart attack, which was one move of the Heart Foundation. So, that was pretty cool. So they paid homage to them. Again, <laughs> that. that. He went up for a back body drop. <laughs> and when he's in the air, <laughs> you can literally hear him say, Oh, God! As he as he was flying through the air. That was great. I mean, the Revival, again, they're, they're, the way they do their double teams, it's so smooth, so calculated. It's a whole tribute to classic tag team wrestling. Um... Even uh, for this, Kurt Hawkins really took most of the brunt of the beating. I mean, he got taken out a couple times. He made the blind tag because they tried to pick the writer, but the rest said, eh, eh, he's not the legal man. He is. So then um, Kurt Hawkins got the roll-up victory over Scott Dawson. Da- Dash, I guess. Dash Wilder, I think. So... I mean, it was a good match. Hard to complain. That's a good cheeseburger match. And the next match, uh, the next thing we had, the Baron Corbin promo by Kurt, um, about Kurt Angle. So, yeah, I retired him. Kurt Angle comes out of the crowd, gets a swan song in, drops Baron Corbin, and then Lars Sullivan shows up. Does the freak of nature kind of like pick up body slam and then does a flying headbutt onto Kurt Angle? That's the way Kurt Angle should have gone out. He should have beaten Baron Corbin, have a new up and coming talent, have, have Angle just sell the heck out of him. That was really good though. It's good to see Lars Sullivan debut. A good, a good final thing for Kurt Angle though. Can't complain about that. Next we have Alexa Bliss versus Bailey. I need a girlfriend so bad. 
Alexa super waxes. She's like super smooth. Um, this it was a good match. Parts of it look really botchy. I think, and I don't know why. Bailey, again, to me seems really lanky and awkward. If that makes any sense. Alexa Bliss, she's a lot more compact. And she's just so small looking. But again, she, she's a five feet of fury. Where's my key cat? I want to make I want to say that she was two feet of fuzzy. But I guess she's taking a nap somewhere, which I'm about to do in about probably about twenty more. But um, so this was a good match. Again, the one sunset flip and to the turnbuckle look, and then they slid out. It looked really awkward. Again, Bailey's catching Sasha Botchitis because Sasha Banks wasn't there. I guess she's injured. Maybe that's why they had him drop the belt. And then the crowd was still pretty lively, though. They really enjoyed seeing Lars Sullivan come out again. Kurt Angle for that USA. Um. And kind of died off for the revival match, but they were saying, "Hey, Bailey, ooh, ah, I wanna know, will you be my girl?" And just kept that up for the whole match. And the New York crowd are pretty good, so that was fun. Let's see, um, Alexa Bliss actually she has a pretty good DDT. Overall, though, I mean, we could have done without this match. I think someone, a friend of hers, posted a, posted a very hobo-esque picture. It probably got a thousand views and went viral because it just shows her butt. She has a next bubble butt. Alexa bubble butt bliss. So, I mean, it was an okay match. It was a can of soup. This next part, though, made the show. Which is good because the crowd almost went bonkers afterwards. But Becky, Becky Lynch came out looking great as usual. She has her the man shirt and over her, I guess, like leather wear. That she wore for WrestleMania. That was a typical Becky promo and recap. <laughs> she she starts all the chants, which is great. Becky two belt. Becky two belt. Crowd wanted to get involved. She got the crowd involved. Then of course the crowd was chanting. Oh 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 oh. oh. Again, it's kind of fun. Um, then they started to chant, you are the best. You are the best. She, and as she's, she, she stops the promo. And then she walks back and then Lacey Evans shows up. Does her little strut. Yeah, no big deal. Becky Lynch just stands there. She like, I think she starts to walk and she, she turned her back on Lacey Evans. Lacey Evans just clocked her with the woman's right. It did not drop Becky Lynch. I am not a big fan of one-punch finishers unless it's a big show because his hand is like twice to three times the size of a normal human's hand or the old-fashioned heart punch. You can say, well, yeah, you're, you're physically hitting someone's heart, which in theory is probably pretty bad. So so that makes sense. But then, so sorry to brawl. Oh, 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 oh. women in dresses brawling. You know what that means, folks. That means there's a high probability of a wardrobe malfunction. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you, Becky. 
Thank you, Becky. Thank you, Becky. Because as they start to brawl, Lacey Evans' dress rode up a little bit. And I don't know if this is a common thing for, for women wrestlers. But it seems... And I don't know if this is true of all wrestlers. I should, I should ask Jorge that. He'd probably get a kick out of that statement. Either, it seems, wrestlers wear no underwear, which is a thank you, Lana moment. And every so often, with Sasha Banks. Or they wear black underwear. And if you're a woman, that's a black thong. There's three times I've seen wardrobe malfunctions or interesting pictures. Like if you pause it at the right moment of my year in review, when my ex-girlfriend took a picture of Sarah Logan's crotch? You saw black, folks. And then, of course, there was a time Nikki Cross was losing her pants. Again, I saw black. Yes. And, 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 but. And with this, with Lacey Evans, the third time. Saw black. And saw butt. So, yes. The conspiracy of the black thong. <laughs> if you wear a black thong, ladies, it is going to show. Never wear a black thong. It's bad juju. But yes, Lacey Evans exposed herself to all in TV land. I think via watching the highlights, they, for some reason, cut away from it. But when you do the live feed, though, you're wearing a dress like that, and you just get into a brawl, bad things always happen. So that's 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 my rant and rage for that. That was just Lacey Evans showed up her ugly. And then we had move on. Had to take a Shanti. A little breather there. We have Ricochet and Alistair Black again. They're really featuring these two. I have a bad feeling. Alistair Black, again, I've said this a couple times. Alistair Black has a style where he could go every night. Ricochet's eventually going to wear down. So it'll be interesting to see if they do anything with them tomorrow. But with this, um, it was Rick Ricochet and Alistair Black takes on the glorious Bobby Roode and the glorious... Chad Gable. And this was actually another really fun match. I mean, Ricochet can do the flippy stuff. Um, Alistair Black starts off. It's really a striking contest between him and Gable. Gable has amazing technical math skills. Gable really turned it in, and I like it when they do this because you know they're not really going to hurt each other. Because it's, it's like Collegian style. You're not there to hurt someone. but You're there for leverage. But Gable really turned it into like a two-minute shoot collegiate wrestling fest. And I can't complain about that. So that was really good. Oscar Black, again, he can do his wrestling too. He does more of his kickboxing stuff. But again, you can tell the difference when someone goes, goes shoot, shoot collegiate wrestling versus, versus worked striking. Oh, and they had some good, again, Rude and Gable, they're really gelling as a team, though. Because um, Gable had the, the hooks in, spread out Aleister Black's arms, and then Rude came in, again, after the tag, just stomped him in the exposed ribs. I haven't seen that well since the revival, but but old school tag teams used to do it all the time. They'd always expose someone's ribs, and they'd punch them right in the short ribs. That, that, would, that would hurt. 
So then Rick Jay comes in. He still does his slippy flippy stuff. He had a great spot. Um, I think Gable and Rude were on the outside. Yeah, Gable and Rude were on the outside. Oh, no, it was Bobby Rude. On yeah, they were both on the outside, but Bobby Rude was where um, Oscar Black took out Chad Gable, but then they focused on Ricochet because he runs along the ring apron. So let's see a ring apron here. Jumps on second turnbuckle. Does backflip to ground. That was amazing. I mean, it was a really fun match. I hate to say it, but I don't think they can put on a bad match. And if they did, I don't want to see it. But, again, um, it was a roll-up victory, but it was so much fun. I mean, Rude and Gable, they're, they're a great tag team. The thing is that Aleister Black and Ricochet still seem like they are singles wrestlers in a tag team match. So, But, again, overall, this was a good surf and turf match. Then we have an Elias promo. It just says, yeah, whatever. We'll get more towards Elias a little bit later in the show. But then it was Dean Ambrose versus Bobby Lashley in Dean's last match, and boy, was it, it, it's mixed. I'm going to downgrade it, I think. Bobby Lashley, first of all, comes out just, Dean Ambrose comes out to his music, and yeah, it's okay. He comes out, jacket, jeans. Looks kind of comfy. Looks really casual. Um, Bobby Lashley comes out. Ooh, trash talking. I didn't catch all of it. But I think he said some not so nice things about Renee Young Ambrose. Because Dean Ambrose was just furious. I don't even think the bell rang. But it was pretty good, though. So they just start brawling each other. Um, Leo Rush wants nothing to do with Dean Ambrose because he knows he's crazy. And for, but, again, even the commentary booth men mentioned that Renee, your husband, is getting whooped. You could, you could almost hear him say, whoo! You're not supposed to say that? Um, Dean, again, Dean hasn't learned his lesson from CCW yet. And this is probably why Dean's leaving WWF because he, he hasn't figured out that when you get the table set up, you're getting the table set up for yourself. Because again, he started to rip apart the announce table. I gave just Bobby Lashley enough time to get himself together. He literally threw Dean onto, onto the announce table. And probably because it's Dean's last match, this was the first time that Renee Young actually looked concerned about her husband's safety. So it finally happened. Wow. It took so long. Then we have a broken Mojo Raleigh promo because there's a broken mirror and his face paint looks all veiny over the one eye. Semi like the very early goings on of broken. Yes, Matt Hardy and Brother Nero. Again, back in Impact, though. That was kind of weird. Then Sami Zayn's back. Oh, 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 let's go. I think that's the only difference between his music and Becky. Actually, I think that is the only difference. So I think they have words in his song. Becky's all instrumental. Wait a second. Cheap bastard WWE. Recycling of music. I just realized. I think I knew that before. But Sami Zayn's back. Starts to cut a promo. Finn Balor comes out. Sami Zayn versus Finn Balor. Oh, this is so good. Except for what happened afterwards was blah. So Sami Zayn, again, he still has all the moves. He can still do the flips. The commentary said he looked off by half a step. He looked fine. The only reason he looked off by half a step is that he's actually in there versus a full healthy Finn Balor. If it was anyone else, they really look the same. Again, Finn's going more towards that British style. He's starting to do the joint manipulation, the, the kind of finger locks, which is good. 
Sami Zayn still has it. He hit the blue thunder bomb. Um, eventually, it was a, a kind of standard wrestling match between the two. Again, but very entertaining though. Um, again, enough high flying, flippy sustenance to make you go, whoa. And then towards the end, it was. I think the ending of the match itself was the best because it had Zayn roll out after he, after he, after he got in, he got in the corner, Finn did the missile drop kick. Zayn falls. He's in he's in the landing zone for the coup de gras. He rolls out as Finn jumps, throws Finn back into the corner. Goes for a haluva kick. He needs to use the brain buster. Actually, I think Scott Doss, um, Dash Wilder, I think he hit a brain buster on. I think it, it was supposed to be a suplex, but it looks like he just dropped him. That looked awesome on the outside too. That was pretty cool. He probably said, "Listen, we saved Bret Hart." Let us do our thing. And they probably said, mm, yeah, they did save Bret Hart. Good. Don't, don't, just don't kill him, okay? So, but he needs to use the Brain Buster again, especially on the turnbuckle. You can, you can sell that so easily. They're just dropping him on really a pillow and letting him fall. So as long as he, as long as his head grazes the pillow, Gonna hold him up there for an extra second so he can fall to a back. Yeah, that would actually work. As long as you don't like just drop him on the outside. That's probably what they're scared of. But again, so he went for the Luluva kick, which is eh, as far as finishers go. Um, got himself in the corner. Finn shoved him down. Hit the coup de gras from there. Finn retains his belt. He wasn't gonna win. Um, well, Sami Zayn wasn't gonna win. But I'll tell you what, I enjoyed this half step behind Finn Balor. I'd be six steps behind Finn Balor. So again, to me, this is a surf and turf match. But then he just went all heel on crowd. Like, oh, no. He gave his speech about, oh, you should be doing your own thing. Why are you watching me? Why are you trying to live vicariously through me? Do your own thing, you bunch of losers. So it was okay. Um, then, of course, Elias comes out. Of course, he starts cutting his heel promo. Crowd wants to hear none of it. They want to chant. Oh, walk with Elias. We walk with Elias. Oh, walk with Elias. Oh, hobo Tom. That last part came in. They made that last part up. But and then he gives a promo. Dong. Dong. Dun. The Undertaker shows up. Choke slams Elias. Crowd loves it. Crowd right now is so happy. Yes, 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 yes. And just we walk with Elias. Oh, walk with Elias. And then, um, oh, the main event of the evening. And this is, I'm going to split this up because we had Kofi Kingston versus Seth Rollins for a unification belt. Great stuff. I mean, the fact that they really let these two work after their show and made it feel like a big fight feel, it was just started off really good. And again, they just started to, to chant stuff, and they were saying, "We want Kofi, we want Seth." I mean, they were the crowd was really happy to see this match until, wait a second, I gotta channel the spirit of Dusty Rhodes, baby. 
Sweet hot. We got ourselves the dust and finish, baby. You know why? The boss showed up. Them two no good doers and Seamus and Cesaro. They showed up and made this match a dust and finish, baby. Nobody wins. And really, nobody did win. But Seamus beat up Kofi. And Cesaro beat up Seth Rollins. So it was a true dusty finish. But still, the match itself was really good. And that actually earns really a cheeseburger. And it could have been higher if the bar didn't interfere. Once the bar interfered, though, oh, <laughs> that crowd was furious. So then they, then, they, then they said, oh, well, you're here, I'm here, they're here. Are you down for it? Yeah, I'm down for it. Let's, so let's have a tag team match. Oh, the crowd was not happy. <laughs> the whole crowd started to go bonkers. I'll tell you what, if it wasn't a New York crowd, and there wasn't probably New York police and security watching over everything, it would have been a bash at the beach moment where people would have thrown garbage all over the place. Because, like, the, ho the whole beginning. Bullshit. For really a good five minutes. Nothing. Bullshit. Bullshit. Um. <laughs> and then the crowd did the ultimate insult. We want beach balls. We want beach balls. Beach ball mania. Beach ball mania. They reminded Seamus and Cesaro of the infamous beach ball incident. WWE better be careful. For WrestleMania, they're coming to Tampa, Florida. If they pulled something like this at WrestleMania in Tampa, you will see Beach Ball Mania. And trust me, the crowd was furious. They, only because the match was so good beforehand. It was a cheeseburger match, but it was a death bed cheeseburger. So it doesn't count a little bit. But the crowd was so into the match between Kofi and Seth Rollins. When it got interrupted, oh, it almost got ugly. We want beach balls. Beach ball mania. We want beach balls. Beach ball mania. Bullshit. Then, of course, boring. So they got the wrong kind of heat. But I mean, overall, it was it was actually a pretty good tag team match, though. I mean, they had the fun spots. Kofi did Kofi did the trust fall. The bar is just an amazing tag team. They work so well together. They have that great chemistry together. They know what to do. Again, the, the tag team wrestling when you know when take advantage of the five count, expose your opponent's ribs, expose like an arm, drop drop something on the arm. So classic. You can tell Kofi and Seth really weren't quite on the same page. They had their spots, but it all seemed like individual spots. And really until the end, where Kofi hit a trouble in paradise and then a curb stomp, they went, and then the crowd's like, yeah, this is fuzzy war moment. So let's clap. Let's clap. And I think in the dark part, I think they did a quick shield reunion. I think I think from what I saw, I think the New Day came out to help celebrate with him. But I, I could have been mistaken that for something else. But that's not that's not fat nor canon. That's just what it was. And that was raw. Again, you had really good parts. You had the good ugly. The bad ugly. And just the bad part. And that's it. Um, again, a little bit about my schedule. Tomorrow's going to be Tuesday. I'll be getting more into what I'm doing probably then. I'll always have my little banner up. Because, again, I do like self-promotion. 
So again, everyone have a good night. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Black phone. <laughs> yeah. I like seeing women in their thongs. Oh wait, this is so this is still going.